up in spite of my sin. Yesterday I did this, I did that, I did this one. And I know it was not right in your sight, but you choose to wake me up. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this morning. On behalf of everybody that was here, the workers that helped to put this together, the ones that gave it to us, the connection that Pastor Carlos have, Father, it is not them that is doing it. It is your grace. Amen. And so we say thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, O Lord God Almighty, for waking us, not just us, but our families, <coughs> our friends, our parents, our children, our co-workers. You wake them up. And this sun this morning is shining on all of us, good or bad. We are benefiting from it. Lord, we say thank you in the name of Jesus. Forgive us our sins that we committed knowingly or knowingly, especially the impure thoughts, that thought that is in our hearts, and nobody else knows it but you. And most of the time, it's not good. It's not a good thought. Have mercy upon us. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Eshedai. We remember everybody in other countries that have tuned in or that used to tune in. Father, help them. Meet them at the point of their needs. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen in the name of Jesus. This morning, I'm going to share something in the Bible that most of us that have been in church or used to be in church have heard about before, and that we can find in Luke 12. If we go to Luke chapter 12, I title it, Banish Anxiety. Banish anxiety in our life. Regardless of what is going on, banish that anxiety. Don't allow it to take hold of you anymore. He has been doing so bad in our life. We are anxiety about tomorrow. We are anxiety about our children. We are anxiety about our life. Where will we be? What will we do? Ah, the month is ending. I haven't got this. I haven't got that. Christmas is coming. I need to buy this and buy that and give this gift and give that gift. Banish it. As a child of God, you should let it be. I know you will say, ah, look at her talking. It's easy to say than done. Yes, I'm telling myself too. But if we continue to tell God to take over our heart, it will be possible. Praise the Lord. So in that Luke chapter 12, we're going to start on 22. And it says, And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I said unto you, Take no thought, thoughts for your life, what you shall eat, neither for the body, what you shall put on. Take no thought of yourself. What you shall eat, what you shall put on, or where you will be. Don't take any thought about it. Don't let that anxiety of where will I eat, where will I be, this, that, bother you so much. 23 said, the life is more <laughs> than meat, and the body is more than remnant. Our life is more than what we will eat. It is only the living that we worry about what he will eat, where he will be, and where he will sleep. If we are dead in the grave, we cannot worry about that anymore. Because the, the dead cannot say hallelujah. The dead cannot praise God. Those that are dead, they lose. You know why? Because most of them are parents. And they raise kids. And, and, and when it's time for them to benefit from those kids, they die off because of worry. Worry. I tell my mom every day, don't worry about us, whether we do this or do that or don't do this. Don't worry about it. Because if you die, you will not, you will not benefit anything. The little we are doing, you will not get it anymore. What good that should have come from your grandparents, you will not see it. You will be the one that come out of this world, Man. suffered so much, and died for nothing. Man. And did not reap the fruit of your labor. Man. So worry, worry.
worry and anxiety is not a good thing. People have pride in telling telling other people, oh, I have this anxiety about car or about going somewhere. It's not a good thing. Don't tell anybody that. Tell God to take that anxiety away from you. It is not a part of the fruit of, of, of God or the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. So, chapter um, verse 24 say, Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse or bond, and God fills them. How much more are you better than the fowls? The best of the air. They don't have a place to live. <coughs> they did not store their food anywhere. They just worry every day. They go by day by day. Whatever they can get. I'm not telling you to quit your job. I'm not telling you not to do what you do to make your life easy. But don't worry about it. Worry is the problem. It's not doing something. Don't worry about it. You are sick. Pray to God and leave it there. I'm learning. I'm still learning. When something happens to any of my kids, oh, my brain has turned around. I'm learning. Even though I have prayed and I will still be thinking about it. I'm learning. I'm telling God to take it away from me when I pray to leave it there. Amen. And don't think about it anymore. And eventually, because I have handed it to God, that will come, but I have bothered myself so much. And you know what? It takes a lot out of our, our body when we worry. And we don't know it. It will only show up when we are old. How much we disturb our body. It's, it, it's telling us to consider those birds. They fly every day. They don't know whether they will find food to eat or not. But eventually they eat, they survive. It is God that is feeding them. This place is saying, how much more are you better than those ones? We are in a better place. If then be not able to do these things, which is least, why take you thought for the rest? If they cannot store anything, if they cannot save anything, if they do not have home, but they, they really survive much better than me and you, and they don't bother. Why are we bothering ourselves? That's what he's saying. When we raise our kids, Pastor Carlos always tell me that. And they are up to 18, 20. They are grown. All you can do is to pray. Just pray. Keep on praying. You cannot control what they do anymore. Just keep praying to God to help them. That's all we can do. And he said, consider the lilies, how they grow. They turn not, they spin not. And yet, I say unto you, that Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. He said, everything that Solomon had when he was a king, he didn't have more than the lilies who do not suffer. More than the grass who do not, who do not worry about what he will eat. If you, if you have read about Solomon in the Bible, you will know that he has a lot of things. But the Bible yeah. is saying that the lilies of the, of the valley has more than Solomon's wealth. And they don't care about where it will come from or what they will do. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven. How much more will he clutch you, O ye of little faith? The Bible is telling us it's because we have little faith. We don't have a strong faith in God. Our faith is not good, it's not high in him. That's why we worry. He said if God can clutch the little